Welcome to our channel. Enjoy listening to the audiobook. Write your feedback in the comments. Sandra Cisneros, The House on Mango Street As teens, we all wished we could peek into our futures. Adolescent Esperanza yearns to escape her impoverished Chicago neighborhood and build a life of her own. But for now, she's stuck at her family's house on Mango Street, hardly her dream home. Over one pivotal year, she chronicles her friendships, her sexual awakening, and the diverse women around her, some crushed by hardship, others flourishing in its midst. Published in 1984, Sandra Cisneros's coming-of-age novel, The House on Mango Street, offered a pioneering portrayal of a young Latina protagonist. While capturing Esperanza's world, the novel unveils larger truths about immigration, discrimination, and women forging identities within cultural constraints. Nearly 40 years later, it continues to resonate and is now a modern classic. We'll immerse ourselves in Esperanza's joys, trials, and stubborn hope and experience adolescence from a whole new perspective. Esperanza's New Home We all dream of the perfect home. For 12-year-old Esperanza Cordero, her family's new house on Mango Street was a promise, a step away from volatile landlords and toward comfort and stability. But once they arrive, the small, run-down red building in a low-income Chicago neighborhood only disappoints. It's hardly the idyllic home with the big yard she always dreamed about. As Esperanza becomes acquainted with the faded wallpaper and creaky floorboards of her new home, she introduces us to her Mexican-American immigrant family. There's her practical yet compassionate mother, from whose beautiful hair emanates the sweet scent of bread. Her father, who's working so much that he's rarely at home. Brothers Carlos and Kiki, who seem to inhabit their own world and little sister Nenny, whom Esperanza reluctantly takes care of. Esperanza tells us her name translates to hope in English, but means sadness in Spanish. She doesn't care much for it. She inherited it from her great-grandmother, who was forced into a marriage she didn't want. Esperanza vows not to end up like her, sitting sadly by the window, like so many women in their Latin community. With all the adults struggling to make ends meet, Esperanza and the other kids on Mango Street are left to their own devices. Esperanza notes that outside the house, the boys and girls in the community seem to live in separate worlds. She longs for a best friend a role her little sister can't fulfill to her satisfaction. But it will take her a while to find her place in her new community. Through vivid vignettes, the first chapters introduce several prominent themes of the novel. The desire for home and community. The limited roles women were allowed to occupy in the 1960s and poverty's impact on dreams and identity. Esperanza equates the ideal home with comfort, security, and freedom, a place where she can define herself outside societal expectations of womanhood. The reality of the rundown house on Mango Street disappoints her, mirroring the harsh realities that persist in the outside world. Yet Esperanza vows not to inherit the sadness of her female predecessors. This determination, and her observations about the people around her, hint at seeds of independence taking root. But her childlike dreams still brush up uncomfortably against the societal and economic realities of the adults around her. She longs for friendship, 
someone to share her high hopes with. But that person has not yet arrived in her new neighborhood. As Esperanza comes of age, she must find her place and her voice. The People of Mango Street Eventually, Esperanza makes her first friend on Mango Street, pseudo-sophisticated Kathy, the self-proclaimed Queen of Cats. Kathy lives with her parents and many cats in a run-down house similar to Esperanza's. But Kathy fantasizes herself out of poverty by making up stories, like claiming that she's related to the Queen of France. She also educates Esperanza about the other people on Mango Street, dismissing most of them. For instance, she claims unruly neighborhood girls Rachel and Lucy smell like a broom. Despite Kathy's warnings not to befriend them, Esperanza is intrigued by the spirited girls. She goes behind Kathy's back and contributes money for a bike that she will share with her new friends. Kathy's family eventually moves away, dismayed by the influx of immigrants into their neighborhood. A boy called Meme, also known as Juan, moves into their house and soon becomes known for breaking both his arms trying to play Tarzan. Meme's family rents the basement of their home to a young Puerto Rican, Louis, and his sisters. Among them is Maureen, a beautiful and experienced older cousin of Louis, who sells Avon cosmetics and dreams of getting a job downtown. She teaches Esperanza and the other girls about boys, sex, and makeup. But after a young man she meets at a dance dies in a car accident, Maureen is sent back to Puerto Rico for being too much trouble. Esperanza also tells us of Alicia, who cares for her younger siblings while also trying to go to college. She stays up so late studying that she sees mice come out and scuttle around the house at night. Alicia's father denies there are any mice in the house and lets her know a woman's place is in the kitchen. Esperanza describes the fear outsiders have of her neighborhood, contrasting it with the safety she feels among her community. Yet she also tells of neighborhood children dying or getting injured, alluding to a lack of adult supervision. First neighbor Meme breaks both his arms playing Tarzan, and then one of the unruly Vargas kids falls to her death from a great height. These chapters explore Esperanza's personal growth as she navigates complex social hierarchies and gender dynamics within her community. Though temporarily enthralled by Kathy's pseudo-sophistication, Esperanza finds more authentic female friendship with Rachel and Lucy, whose families are even poorer than her own. Systemic inequalities and confined gender roles surround them. Beautiful Marine dreams of being whisked away by a man, or at least getting a good job, but proves too promiscuous for the sensibilities of the time. Alicia tries to reconcile her domestic duties with attending college, but has to struggle against her own father's limiting expectations. Through it all, Esperanza walks a line between possibility and reality, threat and security, laughter and tears. As she becomes settled on Mango Street, her keen power of observation and imaginative mind piece together a richer understanding of home and a clearer sense of self. Girls and Boys Gradually, the once separate worlds of girls and boys begin to merge. The girls of Mango Street are maturing into women, whether they like it or not. One day, Esperanza and her friends get hold of some pairs of high heels, marveling at how the grown-up shoes transform their legs. But the foray into womanhood proves a little too scary, and they quickly lose interest in the game. As Esperanza's body changes, 
She innocently discusses the meaning of hips with her friends. Are big hips for dancing or for having babies? For the first time, Esperanza also notices boys noticing her when she dances at her cousin's baptism party. Esperanza's brushes with womanhood become more serious when she takes her first job. Lying about her age, she starts helping out at a photo-developing shop. One day, an older co-worker forces her to give him an uncomfortable birthday kiss. As she reckons with what it means to be a woman, Esperanza grows more attuned to the romantic lives of the women around her. Lonely Ruthie seems to be more comfortable playing with children than being a woman. Rafaela's husband locks her in the house so she won't go out alone. Newlywed Mamacita refuses to leave her apartment or learn English. Teenage Minerva has two children and an abusive husband, but secretly writes poems she shares with Esperanza. Esperanza herself develops a first crush of her own, dreaming about older neighborhood boy Sire, whom her father describes as a punk. But although they exchange glances from time to time, Sire already has a petite, pretty girlfriend. When Esperanza's grandfather dies, she sees her father cry for the first time. Musing about death and illness, she remembers how she once made fun of her bedridden Aunt Lupe on the very day she died. She feels terrible about this because it was her Aunt Lupe who listened to all her stories and poems, and it was Lupe who once whispered to her that writing would set her free. As life on Mango Street unfolds, Esperanza makes a gradual shift away from childlike innocence to the complex awakening of adolescence. At first, womanhood is simply a dress-up game. But later, more sobering events follow that erode her girlhood, such as her grandfather's death and her co-worker forcing a kiss on her. Yet for the first time, the promise of writing emerges as a guiding light in Esperanza's life. Aunt Lupe appears as a guardian angel, helping her connect the dots between her wish to escape Mango Street and her calling as a writer. Esperanza the Storyteller On the cusp of womanhood, Esperanza makes a new friend, beautiful Sally, whose provocative clothing and makeup invite salacious gossip at school. While Esperanza is still unsure about her interest in sex, Sally's already flirting seriously with boys. At one point, Esperanza tries to save Sally from a kissing game the boys force her to play. But when Esperanza intervenes, Sally only laughs at her and tells her to go away. Esperanza is forced to confront a harsh sexual reality when she's assaulted by a boy at a carnival. Although she never reveals any details of the assault, it's clear that it has left her confused and traumatized. She keeps hearing the voice of one of the boys say, I love you, Spanish girl. The assault makes her question the lies Sally has told her about sex and tempers her desire to follow in her footsteps. Sally, too, suffers at the hands of violent men. Her father, who claims that her beauty will ruin her, brutally beats her. One time, he beats her up so badly that Sally moves in with Esperanza for a while. Trying to escape her violent father, she eventually marries an older man who turns out to be just as controlling. She ends up trapped in a different house, blankly staring at the walls. At a wake for the deceased baby sister of her old friends Rachel and Lucy, Esperanza encounters three mystical aunts. They recognize Esperanza's desire to flee Mango Street and tell her that she will go far. But one of them takes her aside 
and makes her promise to return for those she left behind. Later, Esperanza shares her hopes for the future with Alicia, the college student. Esperanza wants a house, one that belongs to her alone. If she had one, she claims, she would even let homeless people live in the attic, helping those who don't have houses of their own. She concludes her narration by framing herself as a storyteller. Telling stories will help her leave Mango Street behind one day, while also allowing her to remember how growing up there shaped her. And once she's gone far enough, she'll come back for those who can't leave. Toward the end of her narrative, a brutal sexual assault and the tragic fate of her friend Sally give Esperanza a final determined push to leave Mango Street. The old women at the wake confirm to her that her destiny lies beyond Mango Street, but remind her to stay faithful to her roots. Though little has outwardly changed by the end of the novel, Esperanza has undergone a major emotional transformation. She's no longer a child, but a young woman. She's embraced her identity as a writer and recognizes writing as the key to escaping Mango Street. But she also understands that she's only leaving in order to return one day. Growing up in the house on Mango Street has shaped her, for better and worse, and she feels a responsibility to better the conditions of those who can't help themselves. To the House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros gave you a glimpse into the hopes and dreams of a young Latin American girl, Esperanza. Esperanza is a 12-year-old Mexican-American girl whose family has just moved into the first house they've ever owned, which is in a poor Latino neighborhood of Chicago. Slowly, she befriends other girls her age as they navigate puberty, first crushes, and sexual attention from men. As Esperanza matures, the diverse women in her community reveal the gender roles and discrimination that threaten to limit her future. Esperanza observes them confined in the domestic sphere, living in service to husbands and children. Her friend Sally escapes an abusive father for an abusive husband, just as Esperanza is processing her own traumatic sexual assault. In the end, recognizing that societal constraints and violence toward women are pervasive, Esperanza resolves to leave Mango Street. Her calling as a writer will show her the way out and eventually lead her back home, able to uplift her community.